Very happy and a vibrant day. This is Sushmita Sau and today I am taking Constitution of India Part 2 and this I am going to tell you the key features about our Constitution. Just for the introduction, let me start with why does a country need a Constitution? So, we all know that for a set of rules to be obeyed or to be abided by the country, we need a Constitution. A constitution serves as a set of rules and regulation that every citizen of the country should agree upon. The basis of how they wish to be governed. The constitution of the country states the fundamental nature of its society. We should always remember the constitution states the fundamental nature of the society and uh, Nepal is one of the example of it. It reflects a political system as well and uh, our, the Indian Constitution is formed by, headed by Dr. B. R. Ambedkar. He is known as father of the Constitution. And Jawaharlal Nehru and Sadar Vallabhai Patel was also a part of it. So let's begin. The key features of Indian Constitution. So let's see what our Constitution is. So let's begin with. This is the emblem and our flag, of course, everybody is tuned with this. And this is Dr. Bhimra Ambedkar. You see his photo there and uh, he was, he's the father of our uh, constitution and he contributed a lot for the constitution. This is our parliament. So let's begin with the key features of our constitution. Now, the first key feature is federalism. Now, what does a federalism mean? It refers to the presence of more than one level of government. That is, there are more than one level. Like we have our state assembly, then we have our uh, uh, central, uh, sorry, we have our state level and we have our center level. And now we are enjoying the three tiers. That is, we have the Panchayati Raja as well in every village. The three tier division helps people in enjoying the autom autonomy in exercising powers in various issues the constitution provides a list of subjects for all the tiers that is every tier is assigned with a typical work and law making authority of each tier the constitution specifies the source of revenue for each tier also that is the constitution constitution is taking care of all its parts isn't it by assigning all the uh, the power they can exercise and the guidelines and the, the, the constitution also guides and provides authority to function to the state. Indian citizens are governed by the laws and regulations made by these levels of government. I hope so. I have made myself clear with federalism. Now let's start with parliamentary form of government. What do we mean when we say we have a parliamentary form of government? It refers to the presence of parliament in a country which makes laws and according to which the Prime Minister is considered as the head of the government. The Constitution of the India guarantee universal adult, adult suffrage to all its citizens with respect to their rules in electing their representatives. That is, we elect our representatives and they ultimately they are headed by the Prime Minister and they form this committee. They all together, they form the rules and regulations for our nation. Beside this, every citizen also has the right to contest the election. I hope so it's clear. Now let's see separation of power which is really very important. This is I really consider as very it as very important because the powers has to be defined you know uh, in any country what uh, power what, who's got what power. So we are divided into two, three. Legislature, legislature, uh, executive, and um, the third one is judiciary. The judiciary, um, all the three are very important. The legislature, they make the rules and regulations, and this legislature is entitled to make laws. Then executives, the executives implement it. That is, the executive is that branch of government which exercises its authority in the implementation of the law which has been made by the legislature. Now the judiciary. The judiciary is responsible for me keeping a check on the equ equitable and proper implementation of the laws. The Supreme Court is the highest authority. 
Now let's come to the fundamental rights. Of course, this is something that everybody knows. And the fundamental rights, we often fight for our fundamental rights. The fundamental rights are the basic rights guaranteed by the constitution to its people. This protects the people from the misuse of the power of the state. The constitution of India lists six fundamental rights. The citizens, namely, the citizens, uh, they have the right to equality, right to freedom, right against exploitation, right to freedom of religion, cultural and educational rights, right of constitutional remedies. I'll be dealing with this separately also because uh, uh, in my further uh, YouTubes, you can just go through them and you can see what each of them means. Now let's come to the next and that is secularism. A state is called secular when it's it doesn't promote any one religion. As we all know, we are citizens of India and we all know that everybody can um, uh, they can uh, have any official uh, religion or uh, they can people of from different caste and religion they reside together and they abide with their re religions and no state has declared themselves uh, assigned to a particular religion that is india is a secular country i'm sure that you might have understood uh, this chapter very well and would have understood the terms of federalism the important key points if we revise again first is federalism the second is parliamentary form of government then third is separation of powers fundamental rights and then securism with this i would like to thank you all for your time oh see ya. this is uh, thank you for the slide this is the um, you know, in our constitution, we have parts like part one, what it is assigned for, and it has articles. Like the first one has the article from one to four. Part one, it has the, its laws, and then it has its article. So that way, we have different parts headed by different, uh, um, assigned different. Uh, things specific to that part and then it has the articles but with this i would like to thank you all for your uh, um, for uh, giving up your time and i'm sure you might have understood this and this constitution what i'm explaining is in very short if you go in deep, deep detail uh, you have to read books and books secondly i'll be dealing with part three also with the important uh, with the important questions from these lessons which are usually usually asked at the competition level and of course it's dealing with ncrt's class six seventh and eight with this thank you